Hey everybody, welcome to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron and today we're gonna do a couple little things to oxen. Nothing major, it's almost done. If you watched the last video, you saw at the end of the video we fired it up, let it sit there and run and heat cycle and whatnot, yada yada, blah blah, woohoo, yeah. So it's basically done. Um, I was having a problem with the holly turning the fans on for some reason the signal in the holly is not signaling the ground to turn the fans on so i ended up having to make a temporary ground here to make the fans work while it was running and i can't figure out why the holly won't signal it being that it's used there might be something wrong with it whatever i got a thermostatic switch that came with the fan set up i went ahead and put that in i'm going to run that wire over here hook it up to there then our fans will run directly off of there and we'll take the electronic aspect out of it uh, i need to turn the idle up a little bit because the cam is so big i've got it idling around 750 and it brings it down too far so when you go to rev it it's got a bad stumble just because it's trying to wake up too quick so i might take I set the timing where they had it on this motor when they tuned it. It had a line on the balancer at about 38 degrees. I think that's too much. I'm probably going to kick it back to like 35 or 36 and uh, turn the idle up a little bit. And uh, yeah, so idle, timing, fans. And there's an exhaust leak that I got to fix, but that's just, it's either where I welded the O2 sensor bung in with my little 110 welder that don't work very well, or um, the where the pipe goes to the manifold on the driver's side. One of the two, I'm going to get under there, try to tighten some stuff up and get rid of that leak. But other than that pretty much done i want to clean up some wiring stuff so i'm just gonna go ahead and knock all that stuff out and uh then we'll take it for a test drive but since you're here if you could comment on this video maybe hit the like and while you're down there doing that if you're not subscribed go ahead and tap that button too really helps out the channel and i'd really appreciate it so i'm gonna get to it and i'll be back with you all in a few all right well oxen is done uh it still has some small exhaust leaks where the manifold meets the pipes but we had to order in the donut gaskets that go in there so when they come in i'll slap those in real quick but other than that it's running and runs good everything's good temp stays good oil pressure's good it's all good but i haven't taken it for a test drive yet because my buddy hasn't been able to get over here to help me put the hood back on and the weather's been crappy and raining every day so i don't want to take it out and drive it around with it raining without a hood on it so we're just going to skip that test drive for right now it's going to be here for a couple days because he's kind of my buddy that owns it's busy and because he's thinking he wants me to do some welding and stuff on the trailer hitch too so no big deal but anyways next thing we're gonna do is we got this 307 that came out of oxen sitting over here on the stand and i'm acquiring this motor from him and i have a truck that will be coming up pretty soon i have to go to illinois and get it but be coming up on the channel pretty soon that has a story that i'll tell you guys that whole story when we introduce the truck or whatever but either way, I'm putting it together for my son to be his first truck. He turned 16 in January and gets his license. So that truck has everything but a motor. And I need a motor for it. And a 307, granted it be low horsepower and not big performance. I think that's perfect for my 16-year-old son. So we can doll it up, make it look cool. Put some headers on it, make it sound decent, but it's still going to be a 307. So I want to tear this thing down, see what kind of damage is done to it. Pretty sure it's a head gasket, but 
either way i think i'm going to tear it all the way down i know we don't normally do that but we're going to this time tear it all the way down check the cylinders check the pistons check the crank probably well get new bearings and rings for it and all that but we're going to see if we can just hone it and keep going or if i need to go have it bored and get bigger pistons and all that stuff Let's see if the crank needs to be turned all that it ran pretty good other than being worn out so i don't think it's too bad but it's a 69 to 72 307 i mean i don't think it don't appear that it's ever been a part so we'll see um so that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna get some tools together and we'll get started tearing this thing down all right we're just gonna start by pulling off valve covers take this off the question is the last three motors we've taken apart have been disgusting lack of maintenance no oil changes all that stuff and this thing leaks oil pretty bad so I'm guessing it probably didn't have a lot of stuff done to it so go down there in the comments and tell me what you think how bad is this thing gonna be is it gonna be pretty clean or is it gonna be extremely nasty so Go ahead, drop that in the comments, and I'll open this thing up and see what it looks like. Ready? Wow. I'm impressed. There's no sludge at all in this thing. And even after sitting here all this time, there's still a bunch of oil sitting up in the top end. So, it, uh... It's a good sign. No water in the oil that's not milky or nothing. So we'll just keep going. I'm going to, uh, I didn't think about it yet, but I'm going to go grab a bucket and I'm going to drain the oil out and uh, crack the coolant plugs loose on the bottom of the block so that when I tip this thing over, I don't forget and dump water and oil all over the place. So hang tight, I'll get that done. All right. While I was sitting here letting the oil drain out of this thing, I was just kind of hanging out, making sure the bucket didn't fall. And I was looking around, and in here where the fuel pump goes, there's your fuel pump rod right there, and your fuel pump bolts on right here. This is all full of Vaseline. Like, I thought it was sludge or something, but I stuck my finger in it and pulled it out, and you can see through the dirt that it's clear it's definitely vaseline so you might be asking yourself why would that be full of vaseline well if you changed a fuel pump on one of these before you might know a lot of times people will push that rod up pack vaseline in there or grease or something along those lines to hold that rod up so you can put the new fuel pump in well I've got a little trick for you guys and on big blocks there's a provision in the block that has like an allen head plug in it you can pull that plug out push the rod up stick something in there hold it most small blocks chevy small blocks have a little trick too this bolt right here in the top take it out Just a short little bolt, essentially a plug. And then you go in here and get your rod up like so. Then you take a longer bolt, thread it in that same hole.
sorry guys i'm trying to hold the camera with one hand and do this with the other hand so if the video is not great i apologize but and of course these threads are dirty because that plug i just took out's probably never been out of here so take this bolt longer bolt thread it in there when it starts to feel like it's getting tight put a little snug on it if you look down in there hang on let me get a flashlight for this doesn't do me no good to show you guys something if you can't see what I'm talking about. So, if you look down in there now, you can see our rod. Now let's see if I can hold the camera and the flashlight with the same hand. You see our rod is held up. That's it right there. It's held up. Slide your fuel pump in. Bolt it on. Come back, loosen this bolt back out, and you see that rod just came down, releases your drive rod. So it's a lot easier than packing it with Vaseline, trying to keep a screwdriver or your finger or something in there to hold it up at the same time as you're putting the fuel pump in. And if you've never seen that or heard of that before, You've probably cussed the GM engineers a whole bunch of times and said, why in the heck you make it so difficult to hold that rod up, get the pump in and everything else? Well, they didn't. They made it really easy. Just kind of a forgotten trick that a lot of people don't remember anymore. So if you gotta change a fuel pump, you don't wanna struggle with it. That's the way to do it. And if you take this spacer cover, plate off here you don't even have to try to get in there and fight with that rod to get it up it, it'll fall out you can just take it push it up tighten your bolt down and then put everything together then take your bolt out so just a little hack figure it might help somebody out someday and another little hack i don't know if i've mentioned this on the channel before i may have i may not have but you ever been taking a motor apart after you pulled it out and drained it the best you could rolled it over and about a gallon of coolant comes out of it yeah we all have well there's a way to minimize that extremely and uh that's right here there's oh i got a mess there's holes on both sides of the bottom of the block you usually got a plug like this or an allen plug or uh, sorry or something of that sort take them out you'll know the blocks full of coolant but nothing really comes out because all the sediment and rust and whatever else in your coolant ends up right there and uh Grab you a little pointed screwdriver or something. Junk, junk, junk. Pop a hole. Cool and a rush out. Go around to the other side. Do the same thing. Drain that side out. And then you'll get 95% of the coolant out of your block. So when you tip it over, it doesn't go all over you and the floor. So I just noticed as that was finishing draining on that side that it got milky. So there's our uh oil in the water that we were looking for we didn't have any water in the oil but apparently we had some oil in the water so that leads more towards head gasket again so we'll keep going and see what we find all right we got that all pretty much drained out so go ahead and move on i'm gonna yank this intake off By the way, old 
valve covers you're not going to reuse make a great bolt bins. got our intake off and honestly it doesn't look too bad down in there either not a lot of sludge not a lot of buildup looking pretty dang good so far granted part of that might be because the blue head gasket got some water in there and steam cleaned the thing but even then I'm okay with that too whoever put this intake on last used these rubber seals that I always tell you I don't use I just throw away because they leak see how much oil is on that thing that should be dry the oil shouldn't be getting past it so it's got oil underneath it on top of it and it's full of dirt and stuff and move it back a little bit you can see down here all this nasty oil and sludge and stuff built up and on the china wall here, it's built up. It's clearly leaking. Same thing on the back. The back looks terrible. So, alright. So far, so good. We're uh, not looking too bad at all. So, I'm going to go and get a socket to remove all these rockers. We'll pull all this valve train off both sides. And then we'll get ready to lift these heads. Okay, got all the valve train off both heads. I'm gonna go ahead and pull all my push rods. Maybe. My hands weren't so greasy, I might be able to hold on to them. Two of them came out when I took the rockers off, so they're not missing, and I just got them out already. Alright. Stash those away for now. We may reuse them, we may not. And then, let's see if our uh, little impact here has enough to break these loose or if we're gonna have to go get Big Daddy to do the job. So. Nope, this'll do it. It'll do one. Okay, let me go get the bigger one. I know it's not going to have any problems with this, so hang on a second. Okay, now we're going to do something. Maybe. The socket don't fit in there.
Okay, we got that all unbolted. Sometimes these heads come right off, sometimes they don't. But we're going to see which way this one's going to be. And it's going to come right off. And I'm going to be try to be careful pulling it because I want us to be able to look at the head gasket good. I don't want to tear it all up when I. Oh, that was way too easy. <sighs> So our head gasket all stayed on here and I'll bring you guys in closer so you can see it here in a second. I'm just looking it over to see what I can see. This one doesn't look too terribly bad. It's fairly good. All of our fire rings on uh, 2, 4, and 6 are good. A lot of carbon on the piston, a lot of carbon on the piston. Decent amount of carbon on the piston. Clean piston. That's an indication that you should uh, look there and see if there's something around there. And I drained all the water out of the block and there's a moisture in this hole. So this head bolt hole right here, which should go into a water jacket because the water jacket runs right around here. And let me see if I can get this off without it. Yeah, I can. Okay, pull this out. As you can see right there, fire ring's gone. It's got a hole blown through all the way to that bolt hole. Now, what I do and what I recommend you should do when you put a motor together and you put your head bolts in, put thread sealer on all the bolts, which most of the time when you buy a new set of head bolts that come with thread sealer on them but if that bolt hole was thread sealed and uh, and then even if that well the head gasket probably wouldn't have let go because water never would have got up to it but you can definitely tell a cylinder right here had the head gasket blown out and that pistons clean so we were getting water in there so I'm going to go ahead and back you guys back up. I'm going to get the other head ready to pull off. And when I go to pull it off, I'll turn the camera back on so you guys can see it when I see it. Okay. I got this head all unbolted and ready to go. Okay, let's see how this head gasket looks. Cylinder one looks fine. Cylinder two looks fine. Cylinder three looks fine. Carbon piston, carbon piston, carbon piston. Piston, it looks like it just came out of a hot tank. And uh, guess what? Head gasket's blown in the same spot the other side was. Not as bad as the other side, but still bad nonetheless. It's broke through right there, fire rings gone. So, looks like seven and eight were our culprit. But I can say those cylinders are really clean. And believe it or not, we have zero ring ridge at all. Can't catch my fingernail on carbon even. And 
I don't see any up and down scraping in the cylinders. I believe I can see some cross hatches still, but I'm gonna have to uh, get a flashlight in there and look. But we're gonna go ahead and start pulling the front of this motor off. Dampener, timing cover, timing chain. We'll get the lifters and the cam out. And then uh, we'll be able to roll it over and uh, take the oil pan off. Hang tight. All right, so upon further inspection, at one time or another, this motor has been rebuilt. The pistons are all stamped 30 over, so uh, for you guys in the back that haven't really been participating in the video, go down in the comments and uh, tell me how many cubic inches a 30 over 307 is. I'm just getting my balancer puller here ready to go. We'll rip this balancer off. This motor... Uh, had a blue in, uh, Chevy blue intake, GM blue intake on it. It's got a GM blue balancer on it, and the block and the oil pan are orange, and the heads don't have any paint on them at all. So I guess I didn't really look at it that close. I guess I just said, oh, it's been leaking a lot of oil and it's dirty, but. If I would have seen all that, I probably would have known it had been a part before. Pretty sure my balance will pull it stripped out in there. Guess that's what happens when you use them for a long time. So I'm gonna go over there, grab another one. Pretty sure I got another one. Grab another one and try that one out. Man, that sucker is on there. I got it moving now, but uh I wore out the battery on my half inch impact. Took entirely longer than it should have, but we got it off. So, this timing cover actually has flathead bolts that holds it on, or flathead screws, should I say, instead of bolts, which is old school. I haven't seen one, of, one like this in a while. Get all these off. Try not to lose the hardware. And hopefully they'll all come out reasonably for me. This one seems.
I wasn't thinking before I started taking this off, but these timing covers hook down inside the open, which it doesn't really matter, you can still get them off. But usually if you take the oil pan off first, they come out a little bit easier. So, something to think about if you're doing it. Yeah, we'll take the oil pan off and then we'll uh, get to that. So, kind of running out of room with all these parts piled up here. I think I'm going to uh, get some stuff moved so we have more working space here and change over the battery and my camera and then we'll roll this thing over and pop the bottom apart all right i got my mess cleaned up a little bit enough i can at least walk around the motor again so i got the motor rolled over so we're going to go ahead and pull this pan off I did look in the cylinders with a flashlight and knowing that it's been rebuilt and as good as it looks, I don't think, uh, I'm going to tear it apart anyways. I know there's a lot of rust and crap in the block and the cooling system, like it never got cleaned out good and just ran with water in it. But, uh, and I might, I don't even really think I need to hone it. I mean, I can still see all the cross hatching in it. There's no piston wear in the cylinder. So, we'll see what I decide to do. I kind of wanted to do a, this is how I do a basic rebuild on a motor thing for you guys, series for you guys. So I might just go ahead and do it all just for that purpose. And the more I do to it, the better it'll be and the longer it'll last, so I'll probably uh, go ahead and just hone it and all that stuff. I might not put new rings on it. I'll look at the bearings and see how they look, but if they're not bad, I don't need to spend the extra money to buy new ones. I am going to put new freeze plugs in it. This freeze plug right here is about halfway out and has silicone gooed up all around it so I'm guessing it uh, probably leaks or leaked so I'll go ahead and replace those ones on the back of the block look okay the ones on the front of the block look okay but I'm gonna do all four on the sides and when we get the cam out we'll see how it looks we'll see how the cam bearings look I'm gonna do as much of this as I physically can hopefully I can do this whole motor in-house I don't even know where there's a machine shop here and I haven't heard anything good about any of the machine shops that are close by from anybody that I've met around here since I moved here so uh, I don't have a heck of a lot of options for machine shop other than driving back to Texas and taking it to my buddies that have done all my machine work for years but that makes this motor really expensive if I got to make a trip to Texas to take it over to get machine work done on it. So I'm sure there's some around here. I'm sure if I ask around and look around enough, I can probably find something. But like I said, we'll see what we need when we need it. Oil pan, really clean, no sludge or anything built up in there. Oil pickup screen is really clean, nothing built up in there. This thing really isn't looking all that bad. All the rods are marked, even though number one is back here. <laughs> I've got number two up here where it should be. And number one's marked where it should be. Oh, I see what they did. They put dots for which cylinder it was, and they put numbers for one and two, one and two, one and two. Which, I don't know why they did that. Never seen that done before. They may have their reasoning.
There we go. Timing cover off. Looks clean inside there. For having a rebuild, this chain's awful sloppy. So we'll definitely be putting a new one of those on. And uh, yeah, we're going to clean this thing up really good. I'll go ahead and uh, pull the timing chain off. We'll pull the cam out. And then we'll uh, start dropping pistons out of this thing. Because I always like to take the cam out first. Because there's a risk you can have a rod or something come down and hit that cam. And I don't know if I'm going to reuse it. But if I do, I want to keep it in the best shape I can. So I'm going to go get the wrench that I need to take those bolts off. We'll pull that timing chain and then we'll yank that cam out of there. Alright, I got my uh, timing chain set off and uh, put my bolts back in so I had something to pull on for this cam. Got my surgical gloves on because I don't want to have any contaminants from my hands to damage this cam. And you guys may be saying, wait a second, you never even pulled the lifters out. I did. I did it off camera and they look really good. So, get this out. See how it looks. See how the cam bearings look. I want to see if it's got any markings on it that it's been replaced nothing nothing and judging by the wear on this cam not going to say it's worn out don't have any lobes ate up or anything like that but judging by the wear on it it uh probably the original cam and uh they rebuilt the motor and just put the same cam back in, so. I guess if it checks out okay, it doesn't hurt anything, but I always replace them. Probably because I go with bigger ones, but I always replace them, so. Grab my flashlight and check out these cam burns real quick. They have definitely been replaced. I haven't found any metal dust in the motor at all, which is good. Cam bearings have all been replaced. The best I can see, they don't have any wear mark this front one doesn't even have any wear marks on it like it literally looks brand new the other ones i don't see They all look as good as the front one does. So, that's a good thing. Going to uh, find a 5 8 here. We'll pull this oil pump assembly off, get it out of the way. I'll replace it just because. I don't know when it was put in. I don't know if it was replaced when the motor was rebuilt or not. Even if it was. I don't know how long ago it was rebuilt. They're cheap and good security, good insurance for a good motor, to keep a motor good. So I'll replace that, it'll get a new timing chain. Pretty much already decided I'm gonna put a little bit bigger cam in it, just kind of a street cam, something with a little bit of pep, but nothing big. And we'll pull the rest of this down and see what it looks like. All right, I got our, uh, oil pump off. I'm going to go ahead and start pulling pistons out one at a time. Checking them, checking bearings. And uh, I know I'm starting in the middle, but that's the one that was 
up here an easy access for right now. So I'll get these out and then I'll uh, I'm gonna go get a hammer before I ruin my good ratchet here. Alright. Really didn't mean to do that. I was going to get down there and catch it. But didn't damage the piston. Luckily, it just fell on the oil pan. Pistons look good. Don't have any wear on the skirts. Moving free. Rings look good. They got plenty of pop left to them. So, yeah, and I just soaked my whole foot in oil, but uh, these bearings look like they got a little bit of wear on them, more than I'm comfortable with putting back in, so I will uh, measure the crank when I get it out and make sure it's still standard and hasn't been cut, and if it hasn't, then I'll get standard bearings. If it has, I'll get whatever size I need. But, uh, you guys see what I did with those bolts, those nuts? Nope, me neither. thought I would have set them up here somewhere to find them. But oh there they are right here. Uh, okay. Alright so I got one out pretty well decided that uh, I'm gonna put bearings in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and yank the rest of these pistons out. And then I'll bring you back and we'll start working on taking the crank out. And after that, pretty much it. So, so far, the only damage we found is some wear on the uh, bearings down here. Which, like I said, they're not worn out by any means. I could just throw them back together and it'd be fine. But... I've already gone this far. I'm going to hone the cylinders a little bit. And I got them out. So why not put new bearings in it? Crank journal, that crank journal looks great. I'm going to go ahead and pull the rest out. If I find anything that scares me or anything like that, I'll bring you guys back and show you. Otherwise, I'll bring you back when we're ready to pull this crank. Okay, I got all the pistons out. And that first one that I took out, the middle is usually the worst. I don't know why, but it usually is. So it had a little bit 
of wear on it. The one right next to it had a little bit of wear on it, but the other six look brand new. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of them anyways while I was taking the pistons out. I noticed, probably didn't need that pry bar to turn that. I don't know how well you guys will be able to see it, but right there on the crank, it's stamped M010 R010. So anytime a crank is ground and they go over and you need different bearings, they usually stamp it right there on that first weight or somewhere on the crank. It's usually up here in the front. But I'm glad I found that. And since those bearings were dang near brand new and didn't have any wear on them, I looked on them and on the back side of the rod bearings, they were stamped 10 over also. So I know I'm gonna need 10, 10 bearings for this which is good. I don't have to measure anything. All the crank journals for the rods look great. I don't even, there's no ridges, there's no nothing. They're super smooth. I'll just have to clean them really good and put my new bearings in. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and pull our main caps off. There's four and then your big one for your rear main back there. And uh, the rods were all marked. I don't see any marking on the main caps. So I'm probably gonna pull my punches out and mark these, just go one, two, three, four, and I'll know that one goes there. Shouldn't really matter a whole lot, but I like to put them back in the same spot they came out of. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp those real quick and then we'll pull that crank. Alright, so all my caps here already have an arrow on them pointing forward. So all I have to do, well, that one's got a dot with a one next to it. I guess I just had to look better, better light. That one's got two dots with a two on it. That one has three dots, but it doesn't have the number, so I'll go ahead and stamp that three. Not real hard. It dug in there enough I can see it. That one has four dots. I'll go ahead and lightly bounce our four into that one. And now we know five's five. So uh, we're ready to pull the crank now. Bust it off of here. Got our first one off. I'm not going to say it looks terrible, but I'm not going to say it looks great either. But our crank journal looks good, so that's our main concern.
one's about the same. Not terrible, but not great. Journal looks good, just needs to be cleaned up. They're all about the same. This will be the one that's going to be bad if any of them are bad. Because those rod bearings right next to this one had the worst wear, and it's in the middle. And it doesn't look that bad, it looks just like the other ones. Same thing there. Trust bearing here. I want to look down in on the journal where I looked at the rest of them, which doesn't look bad. But you also want to look out here on the end, on the sides, and see if that's got a lot of wear on it. That means the crank's been moving back and forth, which you don't want. I know this rear main was leaking. You can see the rear main was leaking, but it looks brand new. So maybe it got installed wrong or... Who knows, but that'll get replaced too, obviously. But really doesn't look all that bad. Probably could have thrown a couple head gaskets in it. Called it a day, but I don't want to. So, not going to keep beating a dead horse and saying the same thing. You guys already know what my plan is here. So, we're just going to throw bearings in it, hone the cylinders. Clean it up really good, probably freshen up the heads, all new gaskets, cam, you know, just that little stuff. But this is ready to come out. Break the suction from the block. Ah. get that standing up on its own over there now obviously everything here is going to have to be very thoroughly cleaned I mean it's all the stuff on the inside is nasty and oily but it's clean oil and the inside of the box clean everything on the outside well you know how it is so last thing I want to do well two things I want to take the oil filter off and I want to pull the freeze plugs out of the sides of the block and one because I know I want to replace that one and two because I've acquired a lot of little tricks over the past 20 25 years of doing probably 25 years of doing this stuff and I got another trick to get these cleaned up really good if you don't have a hot tank which I don't have a hot tank so I need to get it cleaned up really good so got another little trick I'll show you guys on how to do that after I get these bearings out of here They don't look, I said they look like they're warm. They don't really look warm, like, so to speak. They're pretty clean, but they look like they've had something go through them. Like, they've all got little scrape marks on them. Like, I don't know if it was, you know, metal that came off of something during break-in or what the case may be. But I still want to clean everything really, really well. Oh, I really got a good view of the 
cam bearings now. And they really look great. So. Yeah, they look perfect. So, anyways, what I was saying. I don't even know what I was saying. So, I'm going to take the oil filter off. We're going to pop the freeze plugs out of the sides of the block. And might go ahead and do the front of the block too, but uh, and then I'll go over our next step for how to clean these up good and flush them out if you don't have a hot tank. All right, if you've never pulled a freeze plug out before. You're going to need a flat tip screwdriver or a punch or a chisel and a hammer. You're going to go down in one corner. And turn it sideways, which didn't really turn sideways, it kind of pushed it all the way in the block. But get it in there, get it sideways, and you just pop them right out. Do the same thing on this one. same thing on the other side and uh, yeah all right well as you can see I've got half of the engine block in a rubber mag container and uh, we're gonna kind of make our own hot tank and I'm only gonna be able to do half the block at a time I'll fill it up with my cleaner like this and I'll let it sit for a couple days flip it over the other way let it sit for a couple days and then we'll uh, see how good it cleans up but if you guys have been watching the channel for a while you know what my cleaner of choice is for almost everything and they don't sponsor me but I wish they would because the stuff's expensive or getting expensive as much of it as I buy but if you don't know what I'm talking about we got us some good old simple green all-purpose cleaner and this stuff has been great for everything I've used it for so I'm gonna keep going with it but uh, for heavy-duty full strength it says one to one uh, up general purpose is ten to one and light cleaning is 30 to 1. We're going to pour 3 full gallons of this in here. Because I've got 3 full gallons. I'm going to pour that in there. We'll uh, top it off with a little bit of water. To get it up where we need it to be. And just like anything else. If we over, if you know, if it's a little bit over diluted for what we're using it for. Then uh, the longer you let it sit. The better it'll work so I'm not in a hurry to do anything with this block I got to get some parts ordered in for it and stuff like that so we'll put it in there today's Thursday maybe I'll flip it like Monday leave it in there for a couple days see how it turns out so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start pouring this straight in here hope this container don't leak And this is also part of the reason that I pulled out the freeze plugs because that allows for this to get in and have places to get out and all that sort of stuff. So, you can already see it activating. I mean, it foams up just from pouring it in, but you can see it continually doing stuff. So. 
All right, we got our three gallons of simple green in there. It's uh, about halfway up the first cylinder. So I'm gonna go and get about six gallons of water, try to mix it two to one or one to two, whatever, and see how full that takes it. I'm only trying to get, you know, like the first two cylinders from the front up in and that way when I flip it over it'll do the other half of the block and we'll it'll work out so I'm gonna go get some water I'll get this filled up and see what kind of dilution it ends up being so you guys will know if you ever decide to do this and then we'll go on from there all right well I ended up putting nine gallons of water in here with the three gallons of simple green to get my desired level to where I can flip the block and get the other half and so that makes it a three to one three parts water one part simple green so you can already see in the foam all the oil and grime that is pulling off the motor and that's what we're wanting to do it'll help loosen up all the gaskets i didn't take off so they'll scrape easy and uh Stuff like that so the cylinders that aren't in the water are still I left them all oily I didn't wipe them down or anything because I don't want them to rust even though I am gonna hone them but I left them all oily they'll sit there and be oily and be fine now when I flip the block I got to make sure to flush all the simple green out of it really good I'll probably pour another gallon of water through it once I flip it and it's out I'll rinse it all down with another gallon of water which won't hurt anything and uh, that'll keep it clean and then I'll just take some penetrating oil or some WD-40 or something like that and spray in those cylinders so while it's sitting the other way when they're all cleaned with no oil left in them they will uh, they won't rust so and the simple green says right on the bottle if you use it to clean metal when you take it out rinse it off because it'll dry it and make it rust so that being said, there's uh, the Harman Garage hot cold tank, I guess you'd call it, because it ain't hot. But I'll go a couple times a day and stir that up, move it around, stuff like that. And uh, I've used Simple Green to clean dang near everything, but I've never used it to hot tank a block. So we'll see what happens. I trust it. Like I said, I use it for everything. I love it. it. does a good job. So we'll let that sit there for a few days. We'll flip it. Once I flip it, I'll update you in another video. But there's not really anything else I can do to that motor right now because it's sitting in there soaking. And now that I know what I need, I have to go get some parts. So uh, this video was on tearing down the 307 and it's torn down. So. I will for sure keep you updated on what's going on with it, how clean it gets, yada, yada, yada. And then I'm gonna do a whole series. I'll video honing it, I'll video the rest of the cleanup, I'll video the reassembly of it, how I put in bearings, how I measure, everything. And uh, we'll go through it all. But in order to see that, if you're not subscribed, you're gonna need to to find out when I post those videos. So if you're not subscribed, please do. Leave me a comment, hit the like button, all that good stuff, and uh, watch for another video. But that's gonna do it for this one. I appreciate every single one of you. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. Y'all have a good one, and we'll see you next time.